This episode is supported by MonsterJoysticks.com. Level up your Raspberry Pi with our all-in-one arcade kit using genuine Sanwa arcade parts. And OneClickPrint.com for your photos on canvas, acrylic, gifts and more. Local craftsmen and global delivery. Hello cave dwellers. Hello cave dwellers and welcome to the city of the future. We're here in Milton Keynes on another road trip and slightly different to the last retro road trip. We went to see Gary in our last video where we got to see hundreds of items. Today we're focusing in on one item. It's this thing which is taking up the shot in front of us. Dave, what have you got to show us today? Well, um, you've come a long way to see my Sinclair C5. Sinclair C5, the uh, brainchild of Sir Clive Sinclair who also invented the ZX Spectrum, of course, amongst many other things. I'm also joined by Ryan, who happens to be my brother and is also uh, an EV expert. Is that right, Ryan? I wouldn't say expert, but uh, I know a few things about EVs, absolutely. Yeah, so Ryan's <laughs> here from the YouTube channel EV Opinion, and Dave's going to show us both the, uh, the Sinclair C5 and hopefully take us for a test drive today. Let's have a look. So um, early in the 1980s, I believe there was a change in the law that meant that an electrically assisted pedal cycle could be legally ridden on the roads without insurance and without tax by anyone over 14 years of age. And Sir Clive obviously seized on this as a business opportunity and the C5, C5 was born. So um, it's largely based on bicycle parts. You might see the brakes and, uh, and the wheels look very reminiscent of bicycles. Uh, and that's good for me because obviously the C5 has been out of production for many years, but we can still get hold of bicycle wheels and tires and, and, and those sorts of things, brake cables. Um, so yeah, the mechanical's largely based on bicycle parts, obviously with a large plastic shell over the top and the added bonus of a 250 watt motor and the power is a combination of the pedals, which we've got down there, nice yep. Sinclair branded pedals, yeah. I might add, uh, and the battery, which is sat just here under where your leg would be. I mean, how much of it is powered by the battery and how much work do you have to actually do with your legs? Well, how good... electric is this EV? <laughs> well, you must always start off under pedal power, otherwise you can put, uh, you can damage the motor by straining it too much. You've always got to put in a little bit of effort to start mm. yourself off. Then you press this button and if you stand back, can we get it into, <laughs> get it to work? on yeah. or off so um, you know it'll go as fast as the terrain will allow you you know on the flat uh, yeah. you might you might get up to the dizzy heights of 15 miles an hour though I, I doubt it maybe mm -hmm. 12 miles an hour down a slope yeah you certainly get up to 15 but one of the disadvantages of the C5 is that even the slightest incline and you know the motor really does uh, start to show um, show some shortcomings mm -hmm. and uh, you really do struggle and you're gonna have to reach for those pedals um, more often than you'd hope. That's yeah. been my find, findings from the first few times I've been out in the C5. Mm -hmm. the, the original range was in the brochures, it's uh, 20 miles. Is that realistic? Um, the original battery, they said uh, 20 miles range, but you'd probably get 10 out 10. of it. And that was a lead acid, I think, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. lead acid. Now, I've still got a lead acid battery in here. It's an ordinary uh, caravan style yeah. um, deep discharge lead acid battery. Um, and uh, you'd probably get quite considerably, considerably more range out of it, but um, I've not, I've not tried it. So You've the not a range test. <laughs> well, it's in fantastic condition. I've never seen a C5 that looks this good, and that's because Dave's put so much effort into restoring it. And the entire restoration, or trash to treasure, if you like, is available on Dave's YouTube channel. Let's take a few, uh, a look at a few clips of that now, and you can see all the effort that Dave's gone into to get it how it is.
Okay, so now that we've got the boot off, we can see clearly the motor over on the left over here. We can see the control box, which is an electrical junction box with a few other bits of electronics in. Uh, the lid here looks like it's come off. Now remove the chain link and the chain comes apart. Being a product of Sir Clive Sinclair, he famously built things to a price point. So aside from the things that have become damaged just because of the course of time, have you come across certain parts of the C5 that you would say, mm, that was done a bit cheaply, they could have done that better? Yeah, I suppose two, two areas really. The, the, um, the brakes aren't, aren't quite what they should be. Um, quite an important part. Yeah, the front brake is a little bit lacking. And in fact, the front wheel is made of plastic. And if you use your brake too often, you can melt the wheel. Ooh. Well, certainly it will deteriorate <laughs> quite rapidly. Um, and the rear brake as well, it's a drum brake and um, you know it does, does wear. I think some of the enthusiasts have fitted um, uh, disc brakes, mm. which uh, you know, they've retrofitted various bicycle parts on there to give themselves a bit more braking action. Mm -hmm. um, also, uh, you know, talking of the electricals uh, and the powered side of things, there's a, there's a motor under there, which is it's, it's pretty reliable, um, but a number of gears and cogs and drive wheels, which are all made out of plastic, again, to right. cut cost, to cut price, but my large drive wheel is made of plastic. It's got quite a few cracks in it, so um, I'm hoping it'll mm. last. It should be okay, mm. but it does show, again, it was all built to a price. Where were um, these manufactured? They assembled it at their plant in Wales, and I think there's a, there's a bit of a persistent rumour that the thing's powered by a washing machine motor. <laughs> that probably gained traction because it was assembled by Hoover on contract. Okay. It isn't actually a washing machine motor. It's made by a company called Polymotor, who did also make washing machine motors, but it is <laughs> right. a, a special uh, Sinclair C5 yeah. uh, vehicular motor. <laughs> I, I can't concentrate anymore. I'm desperate to have a ride on it. Now, I know it's chucking it down with rain outside, but are you happy if we go out and have a go? Absolutely. Fantastic, let's go. It's my first go in a Sinclair C5. It's not ideal conditions. Um, I'm getting pretty wet as a matter of fact. Who thought it was a good idea to have a, an open cockpit EV in the UK? But um, it, I'm actually relatively impressed. There are a few quirks. I do keep banging my feet down here when I'm pedaling and the handlebars certainly catch on my thighs every now and then. But as a concept, it does actually work pretty well. Um, it does need a little bit of extra pedal power to get up the hills. It doesn't have a huge amount of grunt. And then this is a, a technique that I think every C5 owner has to adopt. The kickback <laughs> three point turn. There's no reverse, of course. So you've got to stick your legs out and you've got to kick back. You've got to really give it the extra beans on the pedals to get up the hills, but I like it. 
I could quite happily see myself in a C5 on a nice day. Uh, and I am of course on a footpath right now and not on a main road with buses going past me. That could change everything. Well, as much as I love that out there, Dave, I'll be honest, it's all a bit wet today. Uh, and what better place to come and get out of the drive than the Milton Keynes EV Experience Centre? Uh, have you been here before? I've, I've passed through while I've been doing my shopping, but I've never had a good look round, so good opportunity today. Yeah, it's, it's a fantastic resource that um, I know in the EV world is really well known. People would like to replicate this around the country. It's a lovely place. but. That's not what we're here, we're not here to discuss that today. What we're here to talk about is um, uh, more about the C5. And for me, uh, the question that I had was, is this just the crazy brainchild of a deluded uh, inventor that's gone horribly wrong? Or is it somebody who, he was way ahead of his time, decades ahead of his time, and he's invented something that actually, if it was brought into production now, would work? Uh, have you had a chance to think about that? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, for some of his failed products, Sir Clive was ahead of his time. Mm. And the case in point is the C5. I mean, uh, you've got to remember that it wasn't the be all and end all. He wasn't you know, proposing that this was an electric car. This was just a stepping stone on the way from this. It was a C5, there was going to be a C10, and finally a C15, which would be a full passenger carrying electric vehicle, a car as we know it. So, um, yeah, I mean, obviously, here we are in 2018 electric cars here in Milton Keynes, city of the future. <laughs> they are two a penny, I think, here. Yeah. We've got more electric cars than, than anywhere else in the country. Is that, is that right? Do we know what the C10 yes, and the C15 yeah. were going to be? So, the, for my understanding, correct me if I'm wrong, the uh, C10 was going to be a two-seater city car, a like three-wheeler, uh, and the C15 was going to be a four-seater um, uh, car. I think right. it was also going to be a three-wheeler. Um, but from what I understand, they were talking about ranges of 180 miles, which mm. technology at the time, I think um, they might have been hard pressed to, to get that mm. sort of range out of it. Yeah, I mean, they were yeah. probably limited by the technology of the time. I mean, this is lead, lead acid battery technology. It's all very heavy. Yeah. I mean, it's heavy enough just with one person in the C5. So I dread to think what this, <laughs> this car would yeah. have you know, required to power people on lead, lead acid. I have to say, I na naively thought when I came to see the C5, I was going to find the whole floor plan as batteries all yeah. neatly laid out like, like, like a modern now, EV yeah. but it's just the 12 volt old-fashioned car, car battery um, mm -hmm. so yeah quite how they would have upscaled that as you say to a full-size family car in the 80s you would have had a vat of battery acid behind the family with you sloshing <laughs> around as you go around corners <laughs> could have been true I think they, they didn't they have a, an idea for a battery and they they were going to press ahead with it and then they realise actually it, was, it just wasn't going to work. I don't know if... Yeah, I've heard of rumours that they were they're thinking about some... They knew the limitations of the battery yeah. technology and were going to investigate it. But I think it's a time thing. They spent so much money on it anyway that that was just going to introduce more delay and more yeah. cost. So they went with what was what was available at the time for the C5. Yeah, and I, I mean, my personal view is that where they went wrong was the marketing. They marketed this as a serious uh, go anywhere within its limitations um, for example go to the shops go to work go to the train station uh, it was a serious electric vehicle for serious people but actually it was never going to work especially not here in this country because the weather for a start was always going to put pains to that mm. cold weather and rain as we found out today but as much security as you put on that you park that up somebody can pick it up and walk away with it you know we've been carrying it in and out of cars today so it i think it was marketed poorly which then gave it um, a bad reputation 
Yeah, um, I don't know though, selling it to that more limited market, the sort of high end market, whether we'd have ever recouped. I think it was no. about 12 million mm. pounds they spent on Awful advertising and producing the C5. Um, maybe, as you say, if we, with a higher um, sale price, they might have achieved well, some even sales. Even to um, maybe uh, the, the target audience, perhaps it was better um, as a, you know, dare I say, like a big boy's toy, um, market it as. This is something you can have some fun on, you could use it to go out and about on, but actually it's not a serious electric vehicle for people to use every day to commute on. I don't know. Yeah, agreed. I mean, you know, the, the scale of the production, it was hoping to sell hundreds of thousands yeah. of these. I think yeah. that was extremely ambitious, <laughs> even, as you say, with a different um, marketplace, like the uh, sort of high-end toy, if you like. I think you, you'd have struggled to have sold more yeah. than a few tens of thousands yeah. of units. So how far afield did they actually try to sell this product? Was it UK exclusive or did they try and sell it elsewhere? Well, I think they concentrated on the UK. They thought about other markets, so for example, the Netherlands. But I think from a safety point of view, the authorities over in the Netherlands said, no, it's a big no, no, it's not safe enough uh, for sale over here. And uh, that put the kibosh on that, really. Right, right. Well, I think certainly, I mean, as we said, electric vehicles, you know, it's the next big thing. Here we are in Milton Keynes very high sales of electric vehicles. Mm -hmm. My place of work, you know, we've got about six places to park and charge oh, wow. your cars, so they're, you know, they're really encouraging it in here. Yeah. Um, in terms of the relevance of the C5 for today, I don't know, I think it perhaps it shone a light as to the future. It wasn't a great success, but it, it did signal a path towards you know, more sustainable yes. uh, transport. You know, this was something not clogging up the roads, but you know, it's the size of a single person. Yeah. Um, it showed that kind of way. It's electric. It's not pumping out fumes. Um, so from that point of view, yeah, it's, it's mm. shone a light on the future. Mm. I would say. Well, one person who does think it's more relevant than ever is the nephew of Sir Clive Sinclair, Grant Sinclair, because he's bringing out what is its spiritual successor, I guess, in the Iris E trike. Have you seen this? have yes um i mean it's it's got a few improvements over the c5 i think it's got a covered canopy so you're protected from the weather that's that's a good thing as we say on a day like today <laughs> yeah we uh, could have the used british that. weather but has it got any heaters in i'll be honest oh, i need some heaters in there <laughs> yeah it might fog up might it, the yeah. canopy i think they might need some fans or something also i think the driving position is is much more elevated than the c5 as we were saying earlier you're quite right. prone so in the c5 some of the mistakes quite low down so you yeah. sat up a bit higher yeah. in that new uh, iris yeah vehicle. that goes back to the original criticism was that you're so low you might not be seen by traffic so bringing it up a bit higher is a good idea i've seen also it's got bluetooth rear view cameras so you can pair up your smartphone with it oh, okay. and use your phone as a rear view camera but do you know what you could retrofit that to a c5 I reckon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Space on the dash yeah. for a rear, rear camera. Speaking of retrofitting things, are there any modern upgrades that some you've seen put into C5s? Well, it's a good question. I've been trying to keep it as far as possible as Sir Clive intended. Mm. I mean, there's a lot of people out there that uh, upgrade them with the likes of a lithium battery. Yeah. Well, that might be quite a good addition, actually, because lugging the lead acid in and out, as I've been doing to charge it, yeah. is... Yeah. Um, and it's not taking it away from its original conception. It's just modernising a component within. Indeed, indeed. It's quite easily changeable. Um, no doubt you could rate the motor in the back there. Yeah, again. It could be like a, a sleeper C5 that <laughs> burns off at the lights. Yeah, well, <laughs> as, you, as you saw from our brief uh, test ride, um, it does struggle with hills, and I think any sort of improvement to the motor would yeah. be a good thing because anything more than a slight incline it's really struggling. So, yeah, an improved motor would certainly be mm, on a shopping good. list for C5 improvements. Well, Dave, Ryan, thank you so much for joining me today um, on our second retro road trip. It's been great to see the C5, especially under the showroom lights here. I think it looks really good. And we're going to get a few glamour shots of the C5 in the showroom here next to these modern EVs. So we'll show that uh, as we go to the credits in just a second. Ryan, thank you for sharing your EV experience. Thank you for inviting me along. Where can we find you? Uh, so my channel is EV Opinion. Uh, it's on YouTube. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram also. And no doubt you'll be interested in seeing the, is it a four part series on your restoration? It's uh, three parts so far, yeah. final part to come. Final part to come. So go and subscribe to Dave. Where can we find you, Dave? So I'm Retro Workshop on YouTube and I've got a website at retroworkshop.uk where I've put some notes about the videos as well. Yeah, Dave's actually taken the time to break down his videos into step-by-step -step instructions for all of the parts of the restoration. So if you've got a C5 or you're considering getting a C5, you can find, I think, all the information you, you could possibly need. 
And also, I know you rely quite a lot on Facebook groups, don't you? Is there anyone in particular that you would uh, recommend people go to? Yeah, so there's um, uh, C5 Alive on Facebook. There's a forum there, and the Sinclair C5 owners Facebook group have been very helpful as well throughout the restoration. There we go, everything you need to know about C5s. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you on the next retro road trip. And uh, I think I might be able to squeeze another drive in around the shopping center <laughs> if you distract security. <laughs> we'll go for another drive in the C5. Thanks for watching everyone and take care. If you enjoy my content and would like to toss a coin into the hat to support the cave, then check out patreon.com forward slash retro man cave and join the official cave dwellers you can see on the screen now. Thank you for your support.